Bobby Bowden. Uh, rest in peace, Coach Bowden. 91 years old, had terminal cancer. It was announced uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that, that he had some, you know, major issues going on. And, I mean, he's significantly older, obviously passed away at 91. Uh, his sons, Terry and Tommy, both were major college football coaches at one point. Uh, Terry now the head coach at Louisiana Monroe. But I don't think that you can possibly state how many people – Coach Bobby Bowden actually impacted. There have been statements and statements made about how unbelievable he was. He was a one-of-a-kind coach, a true culture setter. The program that he built at Florida State was very much based on family, and it was one that a lot of people tried to emulate, but it's very difficult to do so if you don't care as much about your players and about your coaches as he did. So... Do you have any any stories, any thoughts on this? Uh, because this was, you know, we all knew it was coming. It's just painful to to hear it happen on on Sunday morning. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, we we lost an icon. That's just the definition of it. He was able to build something and do something in college football that we have never seen before, and that we're probably never going to see again because of the way the power structures work and 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 brands work and things of that nature. This is a team where most of the people who are listening to this aren't, aren't old enough to remember. You you and I are, aren't, aren't a whole lot old enough to, to remember all of it. But it's just one of the situations where Florida State was a nobody school in the middle of nowhere, Tallahassee, Florida. Okay, I think it used to be a women's school, right? Uh, well, yeah, I think that's how yeah. it's found it. But you're, you're talking about University of Florida was massive. University of Miami was massive, and Florida State was just an also-ran school in the ACC. And it, well, back then, I mean, they, they weren't even in the ACC at that point. Oh they yeah, whatever, whatever yeah. the whatever the conference was back then. Yeah. So hell, it might have, was that the Big East? Anyway, I'm gonna get bogged down. I think it was the one before. That. Yeah, it was like the Metro or or something. I think they were in the same conference with Memphis at once upon a time. Yeah. So 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 anyway, irrelevant. He understood that the only way to get his team to be nationally recognized is for the nation to see them. But they are a small school that, that didn't have a big fan base, and they had no notoriety nationally whatsoever. So he went on the road, and he played all of the nationally ranked teams that get TV games. He went to Oklahoma. He went to Nebraska. He went to USC. He went to all of the places, Notre Dame. He went all, of, all over the country would play anybody, anywhere, at any time, just to make sure his teams got put on TV. And as that happened, he knew he could grow the brand if he could just get the brand out there. And that's what he did. And they were a dynasty for, I mean, a, a, an ungodly a number of times. And think about the team that, won the national championship just after he retired. Like, what was it, Jimbo's second year or third year as a coach? Yeah. That that whole that whole class, you know, most of that roster was put together and those people came, you know, under the Bobby Bowden Brandon tree. And, and so, you know, I I think he's a special person in the sport of, of college football. And, you know, we knew he was going to go at some point in time. It's just, it's always sad to see him go. Oh, 100%. It finished top five, I believe it was, 14 straight seasons. Uh, just absurd. It had multiple opportunities to win national championships. Uh, our group chat that we are a part of with the Northwestern guys, the Westlot Pirates, they talked about the idea of the teams that finished number three back when Randy Moss would have been on the team had he not been kicked off. Those, that one player could have ended up giving him four national championships as opposed to only two. You know, they I believe they won 93 and 99. Uh, just ridiculous. The uh, the story that Nick Saban shared was another insight into this. I mean, it, we, we look at it from a football perspective, but, you know, I talked about the family aspect of it. it apparently, and I, I never knew this story, but when Bobby Bowden was at West Virginia, when he was the head coach there, he... Once Nick Saban's dad died, he knew Nick Saban's dad, and he called Saban 
and offered him to come back home. You know, hey, he didn't even know Nick Saban at that time. He had no idea, but he knew who his dad was and heard that his mom was having trouble back home and told him, if you need to come back home, I will make a spot on my staff for you. And it wasn't like back, or it wasn't like it is now, right? Where you have a hundred different analysts and whatever else, right? You had a set amount of assistant coaching spots that you had to fill. And he was already filled up, but he told him, hey, we will give you uh, a job here. I will get you on staff here if you need to come home and be closer to your mother. And that's that's what Bobby Bowden was. And he always has been, always will be. I, just unbelievable what he was able to build and the impact that he had on so many people. The stuff that has come out on, on Twitter and everywhere else from his former players, former assistant coaches, et cetera, has just been very enlightening. You know, they don't make them like that anymore. And... And I wish they did. You know, there, there was something special about him. It was fun to cheer for him. And I just, I don't know if we're ever going to have anybody like that again, you know? No, probably not. But, you know, we, I, I, I don't know. How, you, there's no replacing somebody like that. You yeah. just learn from them and, and hope that they made you better. Yes. Yes, you are correct. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.